Hey everyone, how are you? In this video, we will try to create a Flask API which is called a to-do API and we will try to connect our Flask API to a SQLite database. So we will learn about how we can connect our Flask API to a real database like SQLite and we will do it using SQL Alchemy which is a Flask ORM or a database ORM which can help us to write our database code in Python and execute it directly in SQL. So we don't need to write SQL codes directly or SQL queries directly, we can just write our code in Python and it will be executed like SQL. This happens using this ORM. Now why do we start with SQLite? See the thing is we will try to connect our Flask API with MySQL Postgres as well in the future videos. For now, if we are starting to connect our API with a database, then SQLite is a good choice because it is an in-memory database. It doesn't require a lot of configurations. Now the thing is we have already created the to-do API in Flask, but what we were using is we were using a dictionary to store our data. Let me show you how this API looks like. We have already seen the demonstration in the last video where we have created the API using Flask. So let me just give a refresher of how this API looks like. This API has five endpoints. The first endpoint is slash to do's which will help us to fetch all the to do's data. You can hit enter and you can see these are all the data which we have in our dictionary. And this is the initial data we have in our to do's API. We can even fetch a particular to do using the ID for example ID number one. So we can go to this to do's by ID endpoint and we can give the ID as one hit enter and we will get our data. If you try to get an ID for example 3 which doesn't even exist, you will get a response as to do not found 404. You can also create new to do's. You just need to give what's the task. The task is new data slash to do and you can just hit this post endpoint which will create a new to do. So there is a new to do which is created. The done is false. Done is the status which we have in a particular to do which is false when it is not done, true when it is done. The new ID created is 3 and the task is new data slash to do. We can even update this particular to do. So we just need to give the ID as 3 and what we can give is we can give the task. Let's give the task as ABC and done as true. So we are marking the to do number 3 as done and we are updating the task as ABC. Now if you hit enter the to do will be updated and if you will again try to fetch the to do data it will be done true ID is 3 and task is ABC. We can even delete a to do. So let's try to delete a to do with ID is 3 and the message we will get is to do deleted successfully. So this is how the API looks like as of now. But the thing is the data is coming from a dictionary and not the database. But in real world we actually use database right. So for this what we need to do is we need to create our logic so that our application uses the database. So that's what exactly what we need to do here. First of all you need to go to the terminal and what we need to do is we need to install the required libraries. So as I have already told you that I will be using SQL Alchemy to perform my database queries. So what do you need to do is you need to install pip3 install flask if you have not installed flask also flask underscore sql alchemy now this is going to install sql alchemy and flask so you can just hit enter and wait for some time for me it is already installed so it won't take a lot of time for you if it is not installed it might take some time once the installation is done you can clear the console and now let's create another file in our to do api flask now the thing is guys if you have not watched my previous video in which i have explained you how can you create an api using flask this to do api then you might not have this code right but if you want this code what you can do is you can check out the description where i have given the link of this particular code so you can get this code and continue watching this video also if you want to understand how you can create it you can watch the first video as well and the video link is in the description as well now let's continue and what we can do is we can create a new file in our folder to do underscore api underscore flask let's create a new file and name it as db.py first of all what we need to do is we need to import sql alchemy so from flask underscore sql alchemy you need to say import SQL Alchemy. Next is you need to configure your database and for that we need the flask application which we have in the main file right this app. So we can just import the app as well so we can say from main import app. Once we have this app available we can say app.config we need to configure our database and to configure you need to give the database URI. So first of all the key will be SQL Alchemy underscore database underscore URI and this will be equal to in case of SQLite this is equal to SQLite colon slash 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 to do's dot db. Now you can give any name but since we are dealing with to do's let's give it as to do's dot db. Next is we need to create our SQL Alchemy app so we can say db is equal to SQL Alchemy app. This is the application we have for Flask and this is the database configuration we have now. Now let's try to create a table and let's call the table as to do. And remember guys I have told you that you don't need to run any SQL query. You can directly write your code in Python and it will be executed like a SQL query. So to create a table what you will do is you will create a class and let's call this class as class to do and this will have a parent class as db.model. 
this db is coming from here which we have created and it has a class called as model model is like a table in database now you need to give the field names so first field is id which will be equal to db dot column field means a column which is a column now and the data type of this particular id will be db dot integer and this will be a primary key for our table so let's give it as a primary key equal to true and this is how you create a primary key in your database table using sql alchemy of flask next is you need to create a field called as task which will be a column db dot column and let's give this as db dot string the data type and the length of this string can be of 200 size and this field should not be null so we will say nullable is equal to false it means this field should not be null when we are creating a record in our table there is another column done which is equal to db dot column in this will be a column and let's make it as db dot boolean because we want to make it as true or false and by default any task which is created should be false and that's it guys we have created our table we still need to run our code but this is the code to create the table and perform any task on this table and guys let's actually get rid of this particular logic because what we will do later, later on is we will need this db in the main.py file and that will create a circular import so let's actually do this configuration in our main file so you can cut this code and put it in your main.py file so your main.py file will now have this configuration and also what you can do is you can get rid of this import now so this should be your final db.py you can get rid of this app as well let's keep this db.py file only for database all the configuration we will do in the main.py file now what we can do is we can go to the main.py file we have this app.config right we have configured our application to have the database uri field as sqlite colon slash 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 to do db also what we need to do right now is we need to initialize our database right so what we can do is we can actually import db from db from db import db this db is your file name and this particular db is the field name in your file so now we have this db available over here what we can actually do is we can also import the to do table which we just created right this is the class which we created so let's import these two fields and next what we can do is we can say db dot init underscore app that is initialize my database using this particular application this is the flask app we have right so this will initialize our database it will create all the tables and everything which we have created in our db table so this is the table which will get created next is we need to get rid of this data right because we don't need it so let's actually get rid of this now let us try to update our endpoints one by one so let's actually update this first endpoint which is app.route to do's and this is for the get all to do's functionality right so in this what we can do is we can say we can fetch our to do's and let's say to do's is equal to to do this is the to do class we have dot query dot query will try to make a query in our database table and we need all the data right so we will say dot all now we have all the data in this to do's next is instead of fetching the data from the data dot items which was our dictionary we will fetch the data from to do's and this will be stored in the to do so now this is how we will fetch our data one by one and we will store all the data in the response right so what we can do is we will say response dot append and we are actually appending temp over here instead of that let's append a dictionary here so it is going to have some fields right so the first field is id which will come from to do dot id now if you go back to your database table this will be a dot it dot task dot done right so this is how you can fetch all your data so it will be task will be equal to to do dot task done will be to do dot done and we can get rid of this temp and now at the end you can just return your response the thing is guys this is the clean code of how to fetch all the data from your table right now we are fetching it from the to do table and then store it in a response which is a list or a array and then you can return it so let's actually run our flask application for now so we can say python3 main.py let's run it and let's go back to the postman and let's see how this endpoint is behaving so let us try to fetch all the to do's and now we are getting an internal server error which is fine it is saying no such table to do okay so it has not created the table to do and let's go back to our code editor and let's try to resolve this particular error okay so what we actually missed is we initialized our application we initialized our database with this app but we need to write another code which is very important which is with app dot app underscore context we need to create all the things which our database is having so we need to say date db dot create underscore all so actually this code is going to create all the database here we have just initialized our database with this app this is going to create all the tables and everything which your db is creating so now it should work let's go back to postman and let's see are we able to fetch some data or not so let's hit this endpoint and this time you are getting a response but the response is empty because we don't have any data which is fine we are going to make use of this post endpoint to create some data but for now we have actually implemented our flask api along with sql database
Now let's go back to our code editor and let's try to write some more code and complete our project. So we are done with the get to do endpoint. Let's actually create the post to do endpoint so that we can actually create some data. So in the post to do endpoint, we are actually fetching our data which the user will give using this request.getJSON and we are storing it in request data and we are creating a JSON out of it. So this is our JSON, right? Now we need to store our data in the database, right? So what we are actually going to do is we are going to say so we don't need this JSON now. We just need two variables, which is task. So let's get it as task, which will be equal to request data task. And then we need another variable, which is going to store our done. So done is equal to false. As of now, let's make it as false. And even what we can do guys is if you go back to your database configuration, if you will see done is already defaulted to false. So we actually don't need to do this, right? We just need the task from our user as an input, and then we will create it in our database to create a new task. We can say new underscore task, and this will be equal to to do we need to create a data in to do right so we need to say to do and task is equal to task this task is a field in our to do and this task is the data which we just got from the user now once we have this new task created what we can do is we can say db dot session we can fetch the session from our db and say dot add to create a new data and inside this you can pass your new task we can get rid of this code for now and what we have done right now is we fetched our data then we got the task from our data then we created a new instance of to do and we gave this particular task as the task in our to do and stored it in new task. Now we have a new task created and we can say db.session.add new task. This is going to add a new task in our database. And also what we need to do is we need to commit this particular change. So we will say db.session.commit. This will create the new data in our database. But now we need to return something else. We need to return a JSON, right? So we are going to return a JSON and the status code is 201 because we have just created a data. Now the thing is we need to return id task and done and all of it we can fetch from this new task. We can say id is new task dot id task is new task dot task done is new task dot done. The id field is a primary key so this will automatically get assigned. The done field is having a default value which is false so this will automatically be false when we are creating it. The task is something which the user has given us and that's it. This is how you can create a new task using the to do endpoint. This will actually create the data in our database. Also, if you go to your folder structure in your project, you can find your database file in the instance folder. This is the file to do's.db. If I go to this file and since I'm using a VS code, I can actually see this data. I have an extension in VS code, which can actually visualize the to do's.db because it is a SQLite database. So I can visualize it. So if you will see right now, we don't have any data. The table is empty. Let's try to fill this table using our API. So since our code is ready and our code is already running, let's go back to Postman and let us try to execute the post endpoint. So now we will try to create a data, a new task or a new to do in our to do's endpoint. So we can say post slash to do's and hit enter. We have already given the task, right? So hit enter. And now the response is done is false. ID is one and task is new data slash to do. Now, if you will come back to your code editor, you will find that a new data is created in your database, right? And let me show you. So this is my database, right? And if you can see this new data is having ID as one, this is my task and this is the done, which is zero, which means false. And right now we are doing it using our API and database and not a dictionary, right? Which is cool. Next is we need to implement the endpoint get to do by ID, right? So what we can do is we can say to do is equal to to do. This is our to do class dot query. We need to make another query, but this time we will need to fetch a particular ID, right? So dot get the given ID by the user. And now we can get rid of this condition. We can say if we have a to do, if this is not empty, now we can get rid of this code and we can say return, we can return our data. And we need to return id task and done all of it we can get from the to do to do dot id to do dot task and to do dot done and if we do not have a to do we can keep this code again and we can say return error error is to do not found 404 that's it this is how easily we are converting our code from using a dictionary as a database to sqlite as a database and all of it is happening so easily because we have sql alchemy which is allowing us to write our complete code in python instead of writing any sql query now this get to do by id is done we can again go back to postman and let us see how this is working. So let us go to the get to do's by id and try to fetch the id number one because if you right now try to again run the endpoint slash to do's, you have one to do, right? And the id is one. So let's try to fetch it. If you try to fetch the id one, this is your to do's. And we are doing it, we are fetching it from the database. If you try to fetch the id two, you will have this error to do not found 404, which is fine. This is what we are expecting, right? So now we have two more endpoints to implement. And now I think you have all the idea to do it, but let's do it together. Let's try to update our to do for any particular ID. So first of all, we are given an ID as a URI parameter, right? This is how we are getting it. And then we are actually fetching our data, which the user has given as a JSON in the body. Next is what we will try to do is 
we will first try to fetch our to do so to do is equal to to do dot query dot get by id right this is exactly what we did when we were trying to fetch our to do here right get to do by id so what we will do right now is we will first fetch our to do and we will check that do we have this to do now let's get rid of this code and what we will do is we will first say we need to update our task right or to do right so what we will first do is we will say to do dot task is equal to request data this is the data which is storing our input data given by the user so we will say request data dot get and we will try to get the value of task if the user has given a value of task then we will update it in our to do dot task and if the user has not given the task this will be empty so by default it will remain the same right so to do dot task what's happening right now is we are trying to update the value of task in our current to do which we just got from the user and this is the input the user has given and we are checking if we have a task in this then we will update this task with the input given by the user but if the user has not given this task because we will not force our user to enter the task if they want to update our to do's they might just want to update the done status as well right so we will say if you give us the task i will update it if you don't give us then by default the value will be to do dot task which is the original value and that's the same we need to do for done as well to do dot done is equal to request data dot get get the value of done given by user if the user has not given a value it will be to do dot done once this is done we can say db dot session dot commit because we are actually trying to update a data right so we will commit the data and then we can return the updated data which will be nothing but id task and done now if this condition is false that is the id given by the user doesn't even exist we can say else return 404 right so we have updated our put to do's functionality let's update the delete to do's as well and then we will move on to test our api in postman Let's go to the delete to do's function and first of all again try to fetch our to do which is given by the user so it is to do dot query dot get by id then we will say db dot session dot delete let's delete a particular to do and this time this is the to do which we want to delete and if the delete is done we will return this message to do deleted successfully now the thing is guys every time you are creating a data updating a data or deleting a data you will have to say db dot session dot commit as well you are not just reading a data you are committing a change to the data right and also let's actually introduce one more functionality if we do not have a to do let's say the to do is not available we will say if not to do then we can return error to do not found 404 if there is a to do this condition will be false that to do will be deleted and we will commit the change and we will return this message and that's the complete project we have right now we have just created a to do api in flask and we have connected our to do api the flask api with a real database which is the sqlite database in the next video we will try to implement it using mysql database but first of all let us see the demonstration of our api so let's go to postman and let's actually try to do it from the start first of all get all the to do's so when we try to get all the to do's this is all we have let's try to fetch a to do by id so if i write an id as one try to fetch it i'm able to fetch it right if i try to fetch any id two which is not there i will get this message to do not found let's try to delete a to do let's try to delete a to do id one so we need to say to do slash one delete hit enter and the message is deleted successfully now if you try to fetch the same to do's again you will find it empty and now if you try to delete the same to do again you will find the message to do not found let's try to create a to do let's say the to do is please subscribe if you are enjoying well that's a shameless promotion but that's fine and let's create this to do and the task is false id is one and the task is please subscribe if you are enjoying okay so spelling is wrong but that's fine it's subscriber all right let's try to update this to do now let's just try to update the task so we will get rid of this done and let's try to update this thing so right now you can see that the spelling of subscribe is subscriber right so let me update my to do and let's say this will be please subscribe if you are enjoying let's hit enter and the id should be one right instead of three hit enter and now if you will see the task is please subscribe if you are enjoying right the done status is false and once you actually subscribe to the channel what you will do is you will say done will be true right and now if you will hit this endpoint the status will be updated right you can see this is our to do now so all the endpoints are working fine and it's working really great right and i think that's it for this video guys we have just implemented this project and you can find the complete code for this project in the description as well and if you are actually enjoying this video if you are actually liking this video then make sure that you hit that like button and if you have any questions or doubts then make sure that you put it in the comment box and i will surely answer those questions for now, that's it for this video guys. If you're not subscribed to the channel, then make sure that you subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching this video guys.